That's all I'd like to say about shortest paths in weighted graphs in this unit. There's some, I think, interesting questions on the homework for you to get to know this concept better and to work with it and apply it to some interesting social networks. I'm going to take this uh, last topic for, for this unit to be estimating the clustering coefficient. This is kind of a different idea, but I wanted to introduce the idea of a randomized algorithm. And um, we did that a little bit in the context of the expected linear time top k algorithm. And in that case, the answer that it returned was always the correct answer, but the time that it took was actually a random variable that on average was linear in the size of the list. We're going to now look at computing the clustering coefficient approximately. This is a really useful thing to do if the exact answer doesn't matter very much, which often in, when you're doing social network analysis, it doesn't really matter that much exactly uh, what something like the clustering coefficient is. You want to just get the, the ballpark, whether it's heavily clustered or loosely clustered or you know, slightly more clustered than the movie database or not. So just getting it correct to a couple digits is probably sufficient. But for the case of the clustering coefficient, getting the exact answer is actually pretty expensive. So just to remind you, here's, here's some code for computing the clustering coefficient of a graph with respect to a particular node v. So given a node v, or computing the clustering coefficient, involves looking at all the neighbors of v, going through them one by one, and looking at the pairs of the neighbors. And for each pair of neighbors, it does a, a calculation to compute how connected it is and then returns a measure of how densely connected the neighbors are. But that's for each node, we need to look at the square of the degree to actually compute this. So if the degree is rather high, if the, if the graph is fairly densely connected, or even if there's just a few nodes that have a very, very high connectivity, like maybe not that many edges, like a star graph, for example. So star graph has just linear number of edges, but it also has linear degree, at least in that one node. And so computing the clustering coefficient for that node is n squared, well, I guess in this case, then the total running time is not going to be n cubed because we don't have n squared on each of those nodes. But the running time is still pretty high, and n squared is pretty high. And if this is actually a densely connected graph like a clique, we're talking about n squared for each of the nodes in the graph, which totals up to n cubed. And n cubed, you know, for something like the Marvel Comics graph where you have 6,000 nodes, 6,000 cubed is a pretty substantial number even by current computing standards. So we'd like to, to have a way of getting a pretty good answer in time a lot less than this. Here's a kind of a formula for the clustering coefficient. The, um, the clustering coefficient of a graph, you have to sum all the nodes in the graph. We're going to average it for the n nodes in the graph. And then for each of those nodes, what we do is we sum up for all the pairs of nodes that are neighbors of the node, v. We sum up whether or not they're connected. And then we scale that by taking the number of possible connections, 2 over the neighbor size of v times the neighbor size of v minus 1. So I want you to think for a second about this, this random process that I've got this brace around here. So imagine that we choose a v at random from anywhere in the graph, and then we choose a pair of neighbors of that, that particular chosen node v completely at random from the graph. And then we return either 1 or 0, depending whether those two nodes are connected. What is the average value of this quantity? And remember, the average we're taking here is average over these two sources of randomness, that we're randomizing over all nodes in the network, and we're randomizing over all pairs. So just to review, the expected value of some random variable x is the sum over all values that variable can take on, the value of that variable times the probability. So for example, for a six-sided die, the expected value that we get by rolling the die, it's the sum over all sides, the probability of getting that side, which is a sixth, times the value on that side, which is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And so from that, we can actually get the, the, the average value that comes up on the die, or the expected value. So given that, and if, if we're given a v, what's the expected value of CWX? Maybe I should ask you. So here's a skeleton to get you started. We'd like to know the expected value of this C, this connectivity variable, given a graph G and a node V of that graph. And I'll predefine for you the set of neighbors of V and the degree of V, the number of neighbors. The expression X in G of W is true if X and W are connected in the graph. So those are the pieces that you need. Calculate this value exactly, the expected value of the connectivity of W and X for randomly, uniformly randomly selected W and X from the set of neighbors. So write that code and we'll test it for you.